G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It's time for my video giving you my weekly tips for the AFL round. If you're new to the channel, please consider hitting subscribe. On this channel we do weekly commentary of what's going on in footy, we have podcasts, we have analysis videos, we do everything. I don't know about you guys, but I actually did shockingly badly in footy tipping in round one, and I think everyone was more or less the same. Round one usually is a tipping nightmare, but it seemed worse than usual last week. But that's all right, this is a new week. We're going to go better this time. First game of the round on Thursday night is a particularly exciting one, and I think it's one that a lot of people, including myself, thought might be this year's grand final. However, you know what they say about predictions that are made in round two? They're not worth shit. As we know, last week, the Tigers got the job done over Carlton. It wasn't necessarily pretty. They uh, were challenged at times, and they literally kicked the first six goals of the game, but I think Carlton managed to close the gap to about 12 points at one point. At times they looked really good, but at other times Carlton actually managed to outwork them. Rance doing his ACL is a massive blow for the club. As I said in a previous video, someone like Garthwaite has to come up and assume a lot of responsibility. I don't think it will necessarily hurt them a lot this week though, because Collingwood don't really have that tall forward that they really need to negate. To be honest, the hardest matchup for them going forward will be Jordan Degoe, who's only, what, 187 centimetres or something like that? He's going to be a tough prospect for whoever lines up on him. The Pies, as we know, lost a pretty disappointing game against the Cats in a very dour affair on Friday night. For one thing, they probably need to adjust to their new midfield setup with Dane Beams in there. It's pretty hard to just slot an absolute gun into that midfield and just expect it to improve by that much. The whole dynamic's got to change. Their skill level last week was generally quite poor, but to be honest, that was a common trend across the whole league. And also, apparently, it was pretty slippery out there, so maybe there's not too much in that. Looking at the recent form between these two sides, Richmond have generally dominated. Although, of course, there was that famous prelim just last year where Collingwood absolutely managed to smash them. You probably shouldn't really be looking too hard into round one form lines, so I'm going to ignore that, and I'm actually going to tip Collingwood in this one by five points. The second game, we have the Swans and the Crows, which should be a pretty close game, I'm thinking. The Crows were really poor in round one. I think they conceded eight goals directly from turnovers against the Hawks. Their ball use was particularly bad and none of Lynch, Walker or Jenkins actually managed to hit the scoreboard. There was a really poor connection between the forward line and the rest of the team. The Crouch brothers did pretty well in the midfield but it really wasn't enough to bridge the gap. On the other hand the Swans also went down disappointingly to the Dogs at Etihad. There's not a whole lot of shame in this, I think the Doggies actually played really well but the Swans did appear sluggish at times. The midfield in particular didn't really have an impact and to be honest the Dogs beat them easily in inside 50s, clearances and contested possessions. Those stats are pretty damning. So, on the whole both sides have started the year poor but looking at the form lines, apparently in the last 11 times these guys have played each other, seven times has the away side won. I don't really know who's going to win, but, but if you follow, follow that trend, I'm going to say Adelaide win this by 11 points. Next game, we have Essendon hosting St Kilda. The Bombers really got pants last week against the Giants, and it didn't really look physically or mentally up for the challenge. Equally, the Saints were really sloppy against the Gold Coast and probably at times deserved to lose that match. Now, the Bombers side on paper isn't half bad. In fact, a lot of people are talking them up as a finals contender. I do see the quality on paper, but it's just about mentally clicking because at times they really struggle to do that and really can't put together a full season, it seems. Now, St. Kilda are undermanned. They're missing guys like Carlisle, Hannabury. Jack Stevens got his issues. Blake Akers missed round one, but he should be in for round two. Neither side really fill me with confidence at the moment, but going to have to go with a team that's stronger on paper. I know football's not one on paper, but I'm still going to tip Essendon by 23 points. This next game's a bit easier to tip, in my opinion. Oh, I should, should really learn my lesson from last week. But Port are hosting Carlton at Adelaide Oval. Now, the Power are coming off an absolutely stunning victory at the MCG last week against Melbourne. Now, often stunning wins can be followed by bad losses because complacency can slip in or they're just a bit mentally zapped. But you've got to give the power credit. They did look really slick and skillful last week, and I think it's the addition of their three first rounders who were all good outside players, and even Jack Watts moved behind the ball and played one of his best games of his career. You also had Tom Rockliffe return to form with 44 possessions, continuing his JLT form as well. Now, the Blues were pretty impressive last week, taking it up to Richmond, but Adelaide Oval's not a happy hunting ground for them. In fact, I don't think they've ever won there. But the Blues midfield does look much improved. All of Cripps, Murphy and Kerno played a role last week. Dale Thomas pitched in as well and then you had young guys like Walsh and Setterfield coming in and contribute straight away. It's promising signs for the Blues, don't get me wrong, but I think I'm going to have to tip Port and by 44 points. The next game is particularly juicy. We've got the Cats and the Ds down at GMHBA Stadium. Are they going to hurry up and rename that stadium? That is an absolute mouthful. But this game is giving me a bit of difficulty to tip. Now the Cats impressed us all last week against Collingwood. It wasn't a great game, but they were really able to shut off Collingwood and really smother 
five of them. Tim Kelly and Pat Dangerfield were really good last week, in particular Kelly, because a lot of people were doubting how he was going to respond to all the speculation about him leaving last year. They also had four debutants, so for them to beat Collingwood with four new guys on the side, suggests they're doing something right. Charlie Constable as well was particularly impressive, had 21 possessions on debut. I think a lot of us were expecting him to debut sometime last year, but uh, now he appears ready and he did pretty well. It was a scrap of a game, but the Cats were just too good, so you have to give him credit. Now, the Demons, as I said before, are coming off a stunning loss to the power at EMCG. Goodwin has suggested that the Ds are actually having quite a few players who recently had surgeries and they're all a little bit underdone. So if that's true, you can obviously say that it's not panic stations for Melbourne yet and we know at their best they're an absolute quality side, but I don't know if they're gonna be up for it for a tough trip down to Geelong this week. They did nearly get the job down, down there last year in Geelong, but I have to say I'm gonna tip the Cats by 33 points. This next game is potentially another blockbuster and that's West Coast hosting GWS at Optus Stadium. I remember last year's game between these two sides at this ground was a really good contest, so hopefully we get something just as entertaining. Now the Eagles went to the Gabba last Saturday night and we have to call it like it is, they got absolutely pantsed. 14 goals to two after quarter time. As I said in a previous video, I think the slippery conditions made it a very heavily contested game and I don't think that's the Eagles strong suit. Being at home this week, and if the weather holds up, the game should be fairly free-flowing, and with Kennedy back as well, you'd have to give him a really good chance. GWS, on the other hand, were absolutely magnificent in round one, and they absolutely tore apart Essendon. They were missing Ward and Kelly, so kind of have their excuses, but the midfield held up beautifully. And Like I said in another video, I think Cornelio could announce himself as one of the best midfielders of the competition this year, and Tarando's beginning to contribute just about every week as well, which is really impressive. I really don't think they're going to miss Dylan Shield too much at all this season. Cameron kicked a bag last week as well, so that's another headache for the Eagles to consider. I can honestly see this game going either way, but I'm going to tip the Eagles by two points. Next up, North are hosting Brisbane at Marvel Stadium, and I have to say, round one has me looking at this game completely differently. North were absolutely butchered by Fremantle last week, which is something I can't believe I'm saying. They just didn't look up for the contest at all. I mean, at times they looked pretty all right, but they just couldn't cope with the manic Fremantle pressure. I thought their new recruits in Polak and Tyson kind of held their own, and particularly Bailey Scott on debut was very impressive. Other than that, it was kind of slim pickings. Now, I would have lent towards them at home in this game until I saw Brisbane club at West Coast last week. Now the addition of Neil and the return of Cameron last week saw a real new edge to Brisbane that we haven't seen in a long time. In addition to the development of the, some of the young guns like Rayner and Berry, Witherden, Andrews, McStay, the list kind of goes on. They're actually chock full of talent. I think they could easily be a top eight side this year. Now I know it's only one game and you really shouldn't be reading too much into one game four limes. Nonetheless, Brisbane must go into this game with a lot of confidence. I think they're going to win by 15 points. Next up, it's the Hawks and the Bulldogs at the MCG. The Hawks were absolutely too good for the Crows down in Adelaide and had a really impressive win. Jago O'Meara is really stepping up in Tom Mitchell's absence and I've been really impressed. I did have the concern that the Hawks midfield was kind of lacking, but between him and also James Warple, who was one of their best players last week, he had two goals, 27 possessions. Hawthorne just keep finding a way to prove people wrong, including myself. Anyway, it's only round one. Things could change, but... That was a very impressive showing from one game. On the other hand, the Dogs had a dream start to 2019, beating Sydney at Etihad on Saturday night. They looked really sharp, and in particular, it was really good to see Tom Liberatore come back and really contribute to his side. The midfield trio of Bont, Hunter, and McRae all did well, and Wallace as well contributed. I said in my preseason video, if the Dogs had more support for their top three, particularly from Libba, Dunkley, and Wallace, they could do really well this year. Early days, but you have to like what you're seeing from them so far. Nonetheless, with this game being at the MCG, I think the Hawks are going to pick the dogs apart. There's no shame in that from a dog's perspective. I think the Hawks are just going to win by 34 points. Last game of the round, and it should be the easiest one to pick, and that's Gold Coast hosting Fremantle over in Queensland. Now, from a Suns point of view, you have to be pretty happy with how they went in round one. I know they lost, and it's probably one of their few opportunities to win at all this year, but they only went down by one point. To be honest, they probably had opportunities to win that game as well. Braden Fiorini is someone I think is a little bit overlooked because of who he plays for, but he's been a pretty consistent contributor for the Suns up there, and he had another 30 possessions last week. Between him and Tuke Miller, they really need to step up and lead this Gold Coast midfield now. Fremantle, as I've touched on, were brilliant in round one. Their manic pressure helped deliver them a win last week, an absolute thumping one at that, and it really allowed space for guys like Cam McCarthy to get off the chain and actually bag five goals. But to score 100 points before three-quarter time is pretty big for a club that's been criticised for its lack of scoring power. And that's without even adding Hogan to the mix, so... Yes, having all of Lobb, McCarthy and Tabiner in the forward line helped their structure, but I don't think that's what won them the game. Fife and Bradhill were really good in the midfield for the Dockers as well, and even though Fife's probably going to be managed, 
I don't expect the Suns to really be able to compete with how he operates. I'm gonna be tipping Fremantle by 38 points. Thanks guys, that's all of my tips for round two. If you enjoyed the video, please consider hitting like. As I said, if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks, we'll see you next week.